is energy. Your thoughts begin with it. Your emotions amplify it. Your actions increase its momentum. Let's take it a step further. Energy is highly contagious. That means every single person in this room has the ability to infect someone else with positive or negative energy. But on the flip side of that, every person in this room also has the ability to be infected with positive or negative toxic energy. That means we have to be cognizant of the energy that we allow in our space, but also the energy that we give off. So the challenge to each and every one of you today, those of you who are here live, those of you who are watching through the broadcast, is simply to be the energy that you want to attract. Now, with that concept that we get to be the energy we want to attract, I want to test it out just a little bit. Now, I want to make sure that for this full day, we are on our highest frequency possible of energy, positive energy, vibrant energy that makes us feel like, you know what? I came to this space today in expectation. I expect that I will not leave this place the same. I expect that my cup will be filled. I expect that there will be connections that I didn't even know I was showing up for. So to get our energy to that level of frequency, our highest frequency possible, I just want to do a little test. And here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to call out a few statements. How many of you in the room are entrepreneurs? Raise your hand if you're an entrepreneur. OK, great. All right, put your hands down. Uh, raise your hand if you are an aspiring entrepreneur, meaning you understand the value. Even if you have a job and work for somebody else, you understand the importance and the value of you putting your name on something. Raise your hand. That should be every hand. OK, now, if you aren't in one of those two categories, raise your hand if you know an entrepreneur. Lord, OK, we got to get everybody's hand up. OK, good. So then these statements, hopefully, will you'll be able to find yourself in some of these statements or a few, at least one of the sentences that I'm going to, to emote to you. So here's the thing. When you hear a statement and it applies to you, I want you to stand up and say, that's me. Now, if you're an entrepreneur already, you're used to looking a little crazy. So that's not even going to bother you. It might be more of a challenge for those of you who perhaps are aspiring entrepreneurs. But here's the thing. As we're monitoring and managing our energy in this space called pursuing our dreams and pursuing success and creating legacy, we've got to stop worrying about what everybody else thinks. Because we are in that landscape in the marketplace. You're looking on Twitter, you're looking at everybody else's everything, and now you're comparing yourself. And what I know is that comparison is the thief of all joy. So we've got to learn to be like that horse in a race and have blinders on. Where we're not looking to the left or the right, we are simply focused, laser focused on where we're going and who we're becoming. So again, the challenge is when you hear the statement and it resonates with you, you're going to do what? You're going to stand up and say, that's me. Now, when you stand up and say, that's me, with your own positive energy and frequency all through that, don't worry about what anybody else is doing who's not participating, stay standing. Because I want you to, to really experience what it means to shift the energy of the room. So stay standing. And if I say another statement that resonates with you, you can still say, that's me too. Y'all got it? Can you handle it? Now, I will talk about you on social media. So you got to give me that energy that we're talking about. So if you are in this room and you know without a shadow of a doubt that the lane that you are currently playing in, it is the thing that you were born to do, I need you to stand up. Come on. Yes, 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 come on. OK, you going to stay standing, stay standing. Oh, don't you, don't you, you got goosebumps already? I got goosebumps already. If you are in this thing called life, and you understand the value of waking up and opening your eyes this morning, and you have life and breath, that beautiful sound of inhale, exhale, and you refuse to take it for granted, I need you to stand up and say, that's me. Ooh, 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 I can't take it, I can't take the energy. I got goosebumps. Just stay standing. If you're in this room, and you understand that ain't nobody coming to save you. 
That your success is all about what you're willing to put in, the deposits that you are willing to put in, the seeds that you are willing to plant. And you are committed to that planting work because you know eventually the harvest will always come in. I need you to stand up and say, that's me. That's me. If you are in this room and you know without a shadow of a doubt that as you are honoring your divine assignment, and let me be clear, every person in this room has a divine assignment. And I can't do it for you and nobody in this room can do it for you. But if you understand that you are on divine assignment and that as you're on divine assignment, life, its job is to gut punch you. Its job is to kick you while you're down. That yes, there will be challenges and obstacles and roadblocks and setbacks, but you refuse to quit. You refuse to throw in the towel. I need to hear you say, that's me. me. Are you in the right room? Give yourselves a round of applause. Yeah. Now, this next little piece is going to make you a little uncomfortable. I need you to turn and face each other. I need everybody from each side of the room. Just turn this way and face somebody else. Face somebody else. Face somebody. And if you see somebody that, that's not facing somebody, you need to go find them and pull them into your little huddle or your group. Yeah, we need everybody. Nobody, is, nobody in this room is alone. You're not alone. There's a, there's a brother here that needs somebody. He needs to be in somebody's group. Anybody else we're missing? My gentlemen in the back, y'all good? Y'all looking at each other? Somebody, everybody's looking at somebody. Now, first, I want you to receive this. Just receive it in your being all through, because we're talking about energy, right? And then I'm going to have you to repeat something. I want you to receive this. Whew. Raise your hand if you've ever felt like this journey called entrepreneurship and success is lonely. Have you ever made the statement, it's just me and my laptop? Raise your hand. Have you ever just felt like, man, I just want to be with somebody, around somebody who gets it, they understand it, and they're not judging me for the cray-cray things I'm doing? Yeah. So what I need you to do as you're looking into the eyes of whoever you're looking into, I need you to understand this, you are never alone. Every day that you wake up and you make a decision to fight, for your dream, like you're fighting for your life. There is somebody else in another city, another state, another country, another part of the world who is also fighting for their dreams, like they're fighting for their life. You are never alone. There is always someone who is also creating a way instead of creating excuses just like you. So look into your partner's eyes and repeat after me. I dare you you. to show up in your brilliance. I dare you you. never to quit. quit. I dare you you. to let your light shine bright because someone someone somewhere in the world world is waiting on you. And then you can give them a fist bump, a a, a shoulder, a hug. I knew the women were going to hug. I knew the women were going to hug. I already knew what it was. Go ahead and take your seats. Go ahead and take your seats. How did that make you feel? Beautiful, right? That's the energy that you deserve to experience every single day. Every one of you deserves to create a life that you are absolutely in love with. That you don't have to hit the snooze button 15 times on the alarm clock. You wake up to purpose, on purpose, and you understand that there is a calling on your life. And we don't have to get caught up into being qualified. It's not about being qualified. Understand that you are called and equipped. Say called and equipped. equipped. Yeah, and then you say I am in front of that. I am called and equipped. equipped. Yeah, that means it's not about how many letters are behind your name. You're looking at a girl who grew up in poverty. I grew up in an inner city housing project in Baltimore, Maryland. It don't get no worse than Lafayette Projects. Every day that I walked outside of my doors, I saw the worst parts of life. I saw people who sold drugs on every corner, and then on the opposite corner were people who were strung out on those drugs, ruining our own communities. That's what I walked out of my house and saw every day. I saw teenage pregnancy, girls who were 12 and 13, about to embark upon parenthood. You're a kid having a kid. We witnessed the worst parts of life. People who went to work every single day and still were so beneath the poverty line that they couldn't even afford to put food on the table for their families. My family was one of those families. My mother is one of the hardest working women I know. 
never miss a day of work. Yeah, anybody got somebody on your job and they don't never call out? They never call out. They the person that get on your nerve because they just always there. That was my mama. Always at work. Set such an amazing example of work ethic and drive and getting it done. But even in that space of working for Baltimore City Public Schools for 25 years as a manager of a cafeteria, a school cafeteria, we had to be on government assistance. And I used to hate getting in line because I was so scared that somebody from school was going to see us paying with food stamps. There was a level of embarrassment and humiliation and shame that came with knowing, how does my mom work this hard and yet we got to pay with food stamps? How is that fair that you can have this type of work ethic and be a good person and be honest and loyal and yet we are beneath the poverty line? Mama is in the kitchen making biscuits with the flour that she has, making homemade biscuits because we can't afford nothing else. She got llama beans in the bowl soaking. How many of y'all know you got to soak the beans, right? So you know already what you're having when you come home from school because you see them soaking in the morning time. That was my reality. And when you grow up in that reality, no one's telling you you can be a giant in the world. No one's telling you you can transform lives. You can travel all across the seas. You can travel abroad and touch people in a big way. And to add to that, the dysfunction in my household was equally as bad because my dad, rest in peace, suffered from extreme alcoholism. So I literally would see my father get so drunk that he would get into this drunken stupor and then he would become violent. And in his violent rages, then there was domestic violence in the household. My father would come and he would bust the windows out of our apartment. Or he would slash my mother's tires in all of his drunken stupor. And then the police were called and we watched our father go to prison more times than I can count. I grew up watching my father behind glass, taking him socks and cigarettes. You don't think that you're going to be a giant in the world when you come from that environment. Instead, everybody's telling you, you're probably just going to be another statistic. And when I graduated high school out of Baltimore, Maryland, that was a blessing in itself. Because a lot of the people who went to school with us never made it out with their life. So to graduate, high school was an accomplishment. But when I went into the workforce, they didn't see it quite as much of an accomplishment as I did. Now, another environment was telling me you ain't good enough because you don't have a piece of paper that says you're good enough, that says you're smart enough. You don't have an Ivy League education that says you can make a certain amount of money. So all of my life, people have been telling me what I can't be. And it takes an inner energy and vibrancy within you to defy all odds. To say, you don't get to dictate my destiny. I'm in control of that. How many of you are in control of your own destiny? Every hand in this room better be raised, because if you didn't know before you came here, now you know. You are in control. You get to decide what this new chapter looks like. That's the beautiful thing about life. You get to decide that you're going to write a new chapter, that this one is going to be juicy. Say juicy. Ooh, it's going to be juicy. I committed to creating a reality that's juicy so that my kids, my three teenagers, would witness a woman who came from nothing living a juicy life. And if I live a juicy life, I become the model for them to know that they can create and live a what life? A juicy. juicy life. I need every one of you in this room to understand that you are the prescription for someone's pain. And the moment that you acknowledge that somebody somewhere in the world is waiting on you, then you can get started. You can have that energy of commitment, the energy of drive, the energy of perseverance, the energy of, oh, I might be an underdog, but I will not be denied. I will not be ignored. The world will know who I am. And I will create such an impact with my unique fingerprint that you will never forget me, even when my physical body is long gone. That should be your goal every day that you wake up and open your eyes and you hear that beautiful sound of inhale, exhale. Whose life am I going to touch today? 
How am I going to enhance my legacy today? Who am I going to show up for today? You might not believe it, which is why I believe God sent me here to reinforce it for you today, that somebody somewhere in the world is praying for you right now. Now, let me clarify what I mean when I say praying for you. I mean they're praying for a solution to a pain that is so profound in their life, they feel like they cannot move on. There's someone somewhere who is praying for a solution. God, send me the solution to this pain. Maybe it's a financial pain. Maybe it's a relationship pain. Maybe it's a health and wellness pain. But they are in pain, and they want the answer. They want the solution, and they're praying on their hands and knees, and you don't even realize you are who they're praying for. Yeah, you. Not Dr. Cheryl. I can't serve everybody, and I'm not called to serve everybody. And what you can, I can guarantee you, you cannot go MIA on your DIA. You can't go MIA on your divine inspired assignment. You cannot, it's not like a job. You can't call out talking about, um, yeah, I ain't feeling good today. So uh, can somebody fill in? Because can't nobody fill your shoes. Nobody can do the thing that you've been called to do. There's something unique and special about you and only you. As my good friend Les Brown says, you are a masterpiece because you are a piece of the master. The question just becomes, do you believe it? And then when you believe it, do you allow that energy to radiate all through your being so that you show up and you do something about it? Motivational guru Tony Robbins says, a real decision is measured by the fact that you've taken a new action, and if there is no new action, you have not truly decided. What are the actions that you are executing? What are the actions that you are taking to say, God, use me as a vessel? I, I don't want to wake up with this gift and just think about it and journal about it and dream about it and go to another vision board party. There's nothing wrong with vision board parties. But you'd have been to 15 of them, and the same thing you put on the last three is still on these first, these three here for this year. Like, we've got to take action. We've got to execute. And there's a level of selfishness. Hear me when I say it. Level of selfishness when you know that you're sitting on some good stuff and you don't share it. Mm. Imagine, and the older I get, the younger I get, the finer I get. No, I meant the older I get, 48 years young, the older I get, some days I just wake up and it's an ache or a pain and I don't know how I got there. I was like, I don't know what this is about. So imagine you have an ache or a pain and especially to my ladies in the room, oftentimes we're so busy helping everybody else, serving everybody else, doing this for the husband and the kids and everybody, and we leave ourselves on the back burner, right? So imagine you have the ache or the pain, you wake up one day and you're like, oh, my, sho ooh, my shoulder, oh, 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 it hurts. But you let it ride for about three months because you're busy. You know how we do. And then finally, that little annoying pain is now an agonizing pain. You can barely lift your arm up. You're like, I got to go to the physician. I, I got to go. And you go to the doctor's office, and you go in, and, and, and what does the doctor say? Tell me what's happening. Tell me, tell me a little bit more. How long have you been dealing with this? What's the level of pain on a level from 1 to 10? you like, it's a 13, doc. It's a 14. You are in a critical state. And the doc comes over and starts to feel around in the tendons and the muscles, and they're like, mm, you know, I kind of think I know what it is, but let me be sure. Let's take an x-ray. And they take the x-ray, and the doc comes and looks at the x-ray and says, okay, I know exactly what it is. And you're like, thank you. You let out this oh, sigh of relief because your expectation is that the next thing that's coming is what? Going to be a prescription to get you out of the pain. And after the physician says to you, I know exactly what it is, and I know exactly what prescription to write so that you don't have to be in pain anymore, says, but I've decided today I'm not writing any prescriptions. How would you feel? Devastated. Yeah, go back home, stay in pain for a couple more weeks, maybe a couple more months, and then come back to me maybe in a couple months, and maybe by then I'll be in a position where I feel like I want to write prescriptions. How many of you are doing that to the people you are called to serve? You are the prescription. You have the answer. Because the thing that they're in right now, the pain that they're stuck in, you were there. 
You know exactly what it feels like to be in that financial trauma, that relational trauma, losing a someone that you love, or the health and wellness trying to get that in order, or whatever the thing is that's your area of expertise. You've been in the pain, you can empathize with them because you know exactly what it feels like, and yet you will not show up to the front of the room because you think you ain't good enough. So still, you're making it about you. Because when you truly identify with the ideology that I am put here on this earth for a greater purpose that is bigger than me, you will get out of your own way. You will make your life bigger than you and you will say, even though I'm scared, even though I have some fears, even though I have apprehension, even though, Lord, I don't know what I'm doing, I'm going to do it anyway. Even when you don't have a full blueprint and you don't know the exact how of how you're going to get from this place, place to the place that you want to be, you show up anyway. Because some of us think we're waiting on God to do something miraculous in our lives, and God's like, oh, I was waiting on you. Yeah, you thought you were waiting on me to drop something in your lap. No, you got to give me something to work with. Faith without works is dead. So after you pray, what do you do when you get up off your knees? Are you going out and you executing some things so that you can be used as a vessel to create transformation and impact lives and shift the trajectory of who people are becoming and what they get to do in this world? and the amazing lives that they get to create. There's a calling on your life. Don't you dare walk away from the calling. Don't you dare allow fear to hold you hostage to a place where you're not honoring what God created for you and gave to you and you only. No one can do the thing that you have been called to do. I'll close with this. A couple years ago, I got to go to Paris, France. And I had the amazing opportunity to host my first international women's conference. I'd hosted a lot of other conferences locally in the Maryland, D.C. region. I had spoken at international conferences in South Africa and India and London and all these amazing places. But now God was like, I need you to up level. Some of you are in your season of up leveling. God is, is, is downloading it to you, but you're getting in a debate with God because you're like, well, God, no, not me. You can't be talking about me. Anybody ever had a debate with God other than me? Like, God, you can't be talking about me. You, you mean that sister over there because she got more, and now you excuse off the assignment that was given to you because you're comparing it to another sister, another brother, when that wasn't their assignment. They already on their assignment. You got a laser focus. So I go to Paris, France, and anytime I'm doing anything that's business, I always take my family along with me. My family consists of my husband and my three teenage kids. I have a 14-year-old, a 15-year-old, and my daughter just turned 18 a couple weeks ago. I done raised a whole human being. Amen, hallelujah. Okay, <laughs> let me stay focused. We go to Paris, France. I host this international women's conference. It's amazing. We have over 125 women who come out to the conference, even though when I signed the contract, I was like, Lord, please let more than just my husband and my kids show up for this conference, because I don't know nobody in Paris. I ain't never been in Paris, and I don't speak French. But God worked it out when you give him something to work with. So after that, my family and I decide to go and do some sightseeing. And so we go to this place called the Louvre Museum. Beautiful, beautiful museum. Thousands and thousands of pieces of art and paintings. And there's this little itty bitty painting there, maybe you've heard of it before, called the Mona Lisa. The Mona Lisa is tiny in comparison to some of the other paintings there at the Louvre Museum. One of the largest paintings there is over 3,000 pounds, but yet you have this little itty bitty painting called the Mona Lisa that's 18 pounds. And as we arrived, we didn't realize the Mona Lisa was gonna have its own entrance. We're like, wait a minute, it's the smallest painting up in this place, but it has its own entrance. And as we're walking to this entrance, there is a line wrapped around that entrance that you have to stand in just to get a glimpse of the Mona Lisa. And you can see it on the wall from where you're standing, and you can see people from all parts of the world here just to get a glimpse of the Mona Lisa. And before you even get up close, they're on their tippy toes, and so are we, on our tippy toes with our phones, and we're trying to get a snapshot of it before we even get up close to it because it is a priceless, original, unique, one-of-a-kind masterpiece that can be imitated but can never be duplicated. And as we got closer to the Mona Lisa, we realized there's this wooden barrier, so you can get close, but just not too close. And then there's a security guard on both sides just to make sure that it's protected. And the beautiful thing about that experience that made me realize 
how valuable we are as people is that the Mona Lisa at 18 pounds never compares itself to the 3,000 pound paintings in the Louvre Museum. I say to each and every one of you, you are the Mona Lisa. Let that sink into your spirit. You are the Mona Lisa. You are a unique, original, one of a kind masterpiece that people might try to imitate, but they can never duplicate. And the moment you honor your divine assignment and the calling on your life and what God has downloaded to you as your purpose, the moment you honor that, you accept it, you embrace it, and you walk full out in it, people will come from all parts of the world just to get a glimpse at you, just to say they were in the room with you, just to say they got to hear the conversation or be in the car to pick you up from the airport just because you said yes. So as you leave here today, make sure your energy is on its highest frequency. Make sure that you stir up in your soul an energy of commitment, of perseverance, of determination, that you work on your resilience muscle because it's not if you get knocked down, it's when. When will you get back up? The challenge is to be the best, greatest version of you that you can possibly be and to say, yes, God, use me as a vessel to impact lives, to shift the trajectory of where people are going and who they're becoming, and to honor the calling on my life. Thank you.